Thank you guys for tuning in to the Dope Vision Experience Podcast. Your boy Frank Nitty. I'm back for another episode. I got a wonderful, beautiful model who's actually been tearing up the runway, been doing her thing. Um, I want you guys to kind of kick back and kind of see what she has to say, <laughs> kind of talk about the industry, talk about her modeling career. Miss Melissa Marie, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Nitty. I appreciate it. I appreciate oh, definitely, it. definitely. You know, I know we've been trying to uh, get together, get everything set up, and finally got your opportunity to get you on the podcast. We get to talk about some of those things that you've been going through as far as like the modeling industry or something, maybe on a personal level, some of the things you've kind of been facing, but we'll definitely dive into it. So, man, just tell me about like your career as being a model. Like, how's that been going so far? So it originally started with me when I was 18. I actually was living in Japan for two years. And then once I got back here, I made 18. Um, I think I got into modeling, I think at 19. And it started off at Bayfair Mall. It's a mall in San Leandro. And yeah, I went to some auditions. And then from there, I ended up meeting like dope ass photographers. Like I'm still close with one. His name is Daniel Spikes. He's been working with me for years throughout. And then I actually ended up catching him at the trap art event. But yeah, I've been modeling ever since then. Um, I kind of stopped because, you know, I had to get my little nine to five and stuff like that. But I got back into modeling as far as like trap art as of last year, December. That was my first event. And oh. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get back into it. You know, I'm trying to, Pull, I trying still to look thing, good. I can make 30. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So <laughs> yeah. tell us about how, how's Japan? You know, you just don't really hear that. Hear people say, oh, I lived in Japan. So was it? Was it when you were much younger or do you, do you remember it? Uh, no. So I was out there from the age of 16 and 17. My stepdad, he's, he's in the Navy. So okay. we were out in Okinawa, Japan, which is an, it's an island. On, uh, it's, it's not on the mainland. So in order to get there, you either have to fly or take a boat, basically. But I, I liked it. You know, I was underage, so I did have a curfew. I had to be back on the military base around like 10 o'clock. So I didn't have that much freedom oh, like okay. that. But I regret it. Now that I'm older, I wish I would have took advantage more and did more stuff. Definitely. Would you actually go back there? I would, although it was a 16 hour flight. The sun never went down. So I had breakfast, lunch, and dinner with the sun up. It was an amazing experience. I would go and I would go to more places that I never got to experience. So. Wow. And so what's something that you've taken that, that you would say that's um, a culture that kind of culturally shocked you when you got there? What was something about that that culturally shocked you when you got there compared to living here in the Bay? Well, I knew about Harajuku girls and, and geisha girls and all that. But, yeah, you don't see that until, like, you really go to Japan. And just all the colors and the Sega building. It, it's just, it's, it's crazy as fuck. But, yeah, they, they know how to dress out there. And they, um, they see, uh, you know, they see Americans and stuff like that often. But when I was there, uh, I got called Tyra Bench. And I ain't just, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm so serious. Like, and I, I said, now, should I go with this or not? So, you know, they... I don't know if, you know, they get, they get it confused, but that, that was a good compliment. I, I can't lie. That was definitely a good compliment, but the, the clothes were definitely different. Um, like just different tall crops and plants. You don't really see like, it just the humid weather. They have different bugs. Like the snails are big as hell. Like it's, it's different, but I, I, I loved it out there. I would definitely uh, go back. Hey, you don't hear that. It's probably doing the, the, the height of the top model. That's why it's called your tire brand, because that's probably the only thing that they probably saw coming from a, coming from America. Oh, hold on. Yeah, top model, top model. Right. Like that. Top model. So you do you do you um what about modeling that you enjoy so much? Like what gosh, what what's what's have you so excited to say, hey, look, I want to kind of get back into this that I missed it when I was much younger? Um, it's because well, when I was younger, I didn't have as many responsibilities, so I was into it more. But you know, I said after I have a lot of talent. Like I I I, I can sing as well and stuff like that. But modeling, I think I'm good at that naturally because I have a natural form as a natural shape is modeling face and all that stuff. So I just feel like that's easier for me. And plus it's, it's, it's just easy. Like I don't, I'll be in a different whole zone. Like when I just, you know, be out there walking the stage, I mean, got everybody looking at me and stuff. It's just, I don't know. I can't, I can't explain. It just feels good to like, it's kind of like, I feel like a celebrity in a way. I don't know, but uh. So yeah. what's going? What, what's the thing that goes through your head before you like right before you hit that runway? You know that that music turned up, and you know the vibe is crazy out there because you know the crowd at Trap Bar is kind of going crazy. Like what goes through your mind right before you hit the runway? Uh, try not to pass out because you know <laughs> I um, <laughs> I've, I've done fast shows in the past, not as many. So and it's been years since I've done like work. So yeah, just trying not to pass out and just trying to figure out what I want to look at because if I look at the audience, I ain't trying to start freaking out or anything like that. So 
um, literally just looking out into space. That's what just got me in. And then the music just got me amped up and just, just ready to knock it out and just kill some shit. So. Dope. And so when you're modeling, like, how do you feel? Do you feel like um, extra glamorous when the, you feel you got a new piece on from the designer and stuff like that? Like, how does that make you feel? Good, actually. Like, uh... Uh, Gigi with the Grunchens brand. Um, her outfit was actually very comfortable. I don't find too many pants like the ones that she created that fits me perfectly. Like there was no extra baggage or space or nothing. They were they were perfect. So I I that outfit I would definitely wear again. Um, I'm not gonna lie, it was skin tight and it just that's how I like it. No space. Like I'm already small, so that just worked out perfectly. Good, good. And so when you when you're actually do you uh, do you like finding the um, the person to work with or do you like the model? I mean, like the um, more or less you want the, the designer to kind of pick you or do you more or less want to pick the designer because of the things that you see that they make? That is a good flipping question. Um, I would say both, but preferably I would want to be picked out from the fashion designer just so I can know like what their interests are and stuff like that. Like if they were to pick me, then I know that um, basically what they want. Like I have the look or the walk or just whatever. Basically, if they're picking me, then obviously I'm, you know, doing something right. So preferably I would like for them to pick me. And then again, I, I, I wouldn't mind looking out for like fashion designers and stuff like that. Cause I like to dress. I like to look nice. I am a little picky and stuff like that, but preferably I would prefer them to like pick me. Yeah, because that's why I ask, the reason why I ask because we have a lot of designers who come through. I know you kind of see some of the other designers, see some dope stuff. You're like, oh, man, I would definitely love to model with some of they, some of the wear that they create. And then more or less when you come to Trap Art, it's more or less like a collaborative effort. And the models kind of come in. And then you have the designer say, that person right there would look great for my my um, designs and different things right. like that. So that's the reason why I asked that. So who are some of the people that you looked up to? I know they called you Tyra Banks back when you were in Japan. So <laughs> who are some of those models? Or do you have any models that you kind of look up to in the industry? Uh, so Tyra Banks would definitely have to be one of them. I was trying to think of the, uh, Naomi Campbell. That's the second one. I, I'm not, I, well, I don't have too many of them, but those are, those are definitely my top two. Mm, those are, my definitely those are some, those are some great ones. You know, Tyra Banks, she had the long running show. Of course, she's a supermodel and Naomi Campbell. She's been in the industry for a long time. So, you know, those are some great picks. And some of the, what are some of the resources that you use to kind of give you inspiration to be a model? Because you don't just wake up and say, oh, I want to be a model. You know, you have to kind of see it or believe or see someone who's actually doing it. But you have to also maybe read about it, things like that. Well, so what's some of those resources that you kind of use to kind of heighten your skills? So for me, I've always been naturally petite. And I've been told that, you know, you should do modeling. You're perfect for modeling and stuff like that. And then, like, just growing up, like, just looking at, like, magazines and the TV, the girls on the TV and stuff like that, I felt like, you know, maybe I should give it a try because I just feel like I have, this is, this is a natural born talent for me. That's what I feel. And yeah, that's what just made me want to just try it because I feel like I, I I'm no quitter and I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to do things until I get it right. So I'm very determined. If I say I want to be a model, that's what I'm going to do. So that's what it is. All right. I know, man, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy, but I want to know, like, give us some of that behind the scenes stuff that people don't know about that's happening doing a fashion show because me, I'm the photographer. I'm on the outside looking in. I'm just like the rest of the people. Cause like I said, I don't see, the, I don't see the uh, shows beforehand and I don't see what's going on behind the scenes. I kind of want to know what's going on. So what happens back there it's, in those it's, back it's, rooms as the show is going on? It's, it's fun. It's just a lot of fast paced. Cause again, like I, like the different fashions I've been in, I never did like outfit change or nothing like that. The last show that I did, I wasn't really in outfit change, but I was back there to see what goes on. And it's, it's, it's like this, like you really have to have everything set, like have your clothes ready and, and switch fast. It's every, it's like fast pace. It's fun and stuff like that until it's your turn to come up. Um, everybody is, it's, it's, it's chill. Um, is there a lot of chatting going on back there? Like, Hey, move. I gotta yeah, it's this. pretty I gotta loud. It's pretty loud because it's everybody want to make sure that they're all in order. We're all in line and know what we're doing, when to come out, know the walks and the poses and all that. So it's, it's kind of chaotic, but it's fun. It's just a little heart racing a little bit, but can't complain. <laughs> what's the, what's the first thing, go, what's the first thing you guys say when it's like over, when you guys, all you guys kind of, you came out, you did your walk <laughs> and then you come out, you do the final walk with the designer and you guys kind of do your thing and then you kind of go off stage. What's that moment like when you guys finally get off the, off the runway together? Uh, Like we did it. I, I could definitely say that, that we did it and we, we, we knocked it out. 
We did it. It's a lot of it's a lot of work with those fashion shows. I know it's a it, lot of yes, work. it is. It is especially like for me. Like I don't do them often, so it took me some time. You know, my walk was a little rusty. So I mean, I had to put a little oil on it, and you know, stuff like that. So it ended up it ended up working out. Like I went to a few walking rehearsals and stuff like that. So it definitely worked out. And then when when you get on the stage, it's like it's it just everything just comes right then and there, and you just do it. And you and you beast it. So what do you say when when you walk out and you on that runway? And you're looking out that crowd, and that crowd's like giving you that energy. Like, what is that feeling like? Like, does it kind of energize you to go harder to make it more does. moves? It does. It makes me want to. Or you counting your steps? Like, oh, <laughs> let me. It's I'm on step three. I gotta hit this pose on this note type thing. It's funny because we were told to walk slow, but you know, once the once the song had switched, that was my song. So I was trying to <laughs> make sure I <laughs> walk at pace and not walk, you know, too fast and stuff like that. And I gotta remember to keep my pose for a certain amount of time you know i was learned i was taught to do that so i can get some footage i mean some good pictures and stuff but yeah just hearing the music it make you want to you know put a little more bounce in your step and stuff like that you know but <laughs> yeah know, that's, that's that's what it was for me i had to keep my little composure because that was my song yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the frustrating yeah. part for me is you guys because i because it's coming because like i said when the show happens it's like people coming from everywhere and it's so fast-paced and I know the models in the head sometimes is their first time doing it. Or maybe they've probably been doing it a couple of times, but they come, they go so fast. They come to the runway. They really don't stop because it seems like they're just so nervous that they're like, I want to get it over with, but I don't want to fall. Right. They're trying to get off the stage. So when those models who kind of come, they kind of do their thing and they kind of stop and they pose, you kind of see that they find the photographer or they find their right light and they kind of right. pause and they kind of hit that moment. You kind of exactly. know they're in, they're, in the, they're in the vibe at that point. Exactly. I know they're in the vibe. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so I want to. Uh, what's some of the like? What's, what do you feel like is your biggest failure in the industry, and what did you learn from it? Uh, my biggest failure. I don't have too many of those, but I need to. Uh, I'll be having my moments where I do get a little frustrated at times. Like, like if there's a certain you know fashion that I know that I kind of really want to work for or like walk for and stuff like that. You know, they kind of pick other models and stuff. I, I have to learn how to just, you know, kind of accept certain things like that because, yeah, it, this is, like, very... It's it's competitive, but, again, all the girls are hella nice and stuff, but I think, yeah, me working on, like, just accepting the fact that, you know, I'm not always going to get picked for certain things, I think that's one of my failures that I need to, you know, work on, basically. That's understandable. That's understandable. We all know. We all, we're not all going to be first-round draft picks for every single thing that we do, but, right. you know, we have to kind of... Get in where we fit in. And once we get in there, that's all we want to do. Once you get in, you can shine exactly. and you can make people forget all about what happened beforehand. So that's mm -hmm. always one of those things. I, I'll be there. Like, I'm in the same boat as you. You know what I mean? I know I'll probably not be the best photographer in the world. Oh, you are. But when I get, you are. No, I'm not going to. I appreciate it. I appreciate See, it. You ain't got to juice me up. You ain't like, got to juice me up. <laughs> you ain't got to juice me up. You know, you got to juice me up, but I appreciate the compliment. But like I said, I know I'm not the best photographer in the world. I have my limitations and I have my, my learning curves. I have to learn things too. So I totally, I totally get it. You know, right. everybody's not going to be a first round draft pick every single time. So what's one of those things that you wish you had have known before you got into the industry? I know we all kind of like, like we jump into the industry. We kind of jump into the things kind of sometimes here at first, but we don't quite know. So what's one of those things you wish you have known before you got into the industry? I wish I would have took, well, I mean, every the practice makes perfect. So, I mean, like I said, like I, I walked in a minute and stuff like that. I just wish I would have probably like uh, practiced more on my walking and, and took more photos so I could have more photos to show and, you know, present on my Instagram and stuff like that. I don't, I haven't really been taking as many of those. So I, I felt like, yeah, that should have been something that I had established, like a model mayhem, more recent pictures and walking footage and, you know, stuff like that to present to fashion designers so maybe you know i get picked up more like that but yeah pretty much as a young lady like i'm saying how's a young lady like yourself how do you make the transition from like i say instagram over to the react to the real world when you're actually hitting the runway like how do you make that transition because a lot of a lot of women probably watching this are probably in that in them in that um position right now where they're just posting pictures and they haven't got the opportunity to get on the runway and they want to know you know what what can i do next to try to get possibly on the runway somewhere so I think that's mainly all that I did. I did a lot of networking on Instagram and stuff like that. And then, yeah, that's why I brought up Chet Art. They, I started following them for a cool minute. And then they started reaching out to me after a while, asking what I want to, you know, uh, come to some of their events and model for them or probably participate in vendor events and stuff like that. So getting that, getting them to look at me is, is it was good publicity for myself. So that's kind of how I got back into modeling. 
Yeah, the basically. networking, you you definitely networking is always a big thing because, you know, um, you have to be able to get beyond just posting pictures online and being able to actually get out to people and talk to them and hit the runway, get some shots, get some photo shoots set up. So would you suggest that uh, women get some photo shoots set up so they can have some some pictures or a portfolio to show to a modeling agency or do, would you suggest going to a modeling yes. agency or do it yourself? How do you, what do you, what are your opinions uh, about that? Well, for me, um, a lot of my photos that I had taken and, and posted on Model Mayhems were through a photographer that I had met when I first started. So he, he had me hooked up. So he always took my pictures. He actually ran my Model Mayhem for me, did all my uploading and all that stuff. So I, I, I think that is best, like having a photographer take your pictures just so, like, cause I, you can tell like the lighting is different and just like how the camera is in general. Like you can tell from a professional camera to like a, a cell phone camera. Yeah, you definitely can. And because of these cameras now, the phones are so much more expensive and the cameras are probably so much better. People are like, oh, I don't need to pay for no photographer. I can just use my, I can use my iPhone. But like I said, the lighting is totally different. It just kind of caps you in a different way. It makes you kind of look a lot, a lot better than just a normal, just a 1080p iPhone camera that kind of takes the picture and snaps it. But right. For you personally, like, tell me about you. Like, what what was it like coming up as a, a young model in the industry? Like, when you were 13, like, 14, like, those younger years, what was it like? Is it anything like it is now? Or was uh, it just totally different back then? Well, for me, uh, I was I was wearing my mom's heels and doing stuff like that. But I, I say that Destiny's Child kind of brought the modeling out of me because every time I used to wear their CDL which is why my mom hates Beyonce now um <laughs> yeah I used to act like Beyonce I think every girl like had a had a celebrity that they had to pretend like they were listening to music and Beyonce was definitely that one for me yeah, so she listening to her she had definitely influenced the generation my, right <laughs> had me put on some little heels and practice walking and stuff like that um and then yeah like over the years once I got older because you know I was I was a little bit under age to really like focus more on that because I was doing school I was in school and stuff like that but once I got older I was yeah I was in high school and I was working and then I started modeling as well so I was I kind of had my hands full basically I had two jobs and then doing like fashion shows and photo shoots and stuff like that um basically and then um I say from 18 to like 22 yeah I was I was pretty much doing the whole little fashion thing and then I kind of Lay back a little bit because bills started getting real and stuff like that. Car <laughs> notes, you know. Life yes. kicks in. So it was hard. It was hard for me to balance, but I said F that. You know, I, I just made 30 this year, January. Congratulations. And I said, I'm tired. Of, thank you very much. I'm tired of working, working hard all the time. I want to do something that I enjoy. I want to do something that I love, which is modeling. And that's what I'm going to do, so. That's awesome, man. What inspires you to, to kind of just continue to go and to do that modeling? Because it's easy to, you know, hit the runway once, kind of get that juice. And then when the people are not, you know, looking at you and the camera's not on you, like, how do you continue to have that ambition and that and that drive to continue to want to do it? Um. Well, me, I, I, I'm very goofy. So I always post like little modeling stuff or just be posting shit on my phone and stuff like that. Um, Just... Seeing like social media has it's it's a main it's a main priority nowadays. Like you see everything on social media from the 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 latest trends to what's yeah to what's really popular. And a lot of girls like to you know practice walks and do the whole model thing and the posing and all that. So me just seeing that all the time made me just be like, okay, maybe I should get back into it because again, it's a natural talent for me. And yeah, basically social media basically did it. Gotcha. Because everything does, is on social infi- media. So we're inspired by the world. We're definitely inspired by the world. It's a lot it's a lot going on in the world and we're definitely inspired by it. And I and I totally agree with you. Like sometimes the people on Instagram is you know, you see something that inspires you to do something. So I totally get it. So are you in your room or in your house, like walking from the kitchen to the bathroom, doing your walk? Like where are you practicing in this walking? I, I actually do my place a little small, but you know, we gotta do we gotta work where we work. Oh, it's the bay. It's the bay uh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, if this you- is actually my first my first place. Um on my, on my own, you know, I've done Definitely. the old main thing, but I'm actually holding it down, so. Hey, you, know. you got to do this the Bay Area. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Yeah, that's true, because it's very expensive here. It's very oh, expensive, good. especially when I'm, I'm doing it by myself, so. Oh, I get yes. it. I totally get it. It's it's insane here in the Bay. I'm like, because I'm from the South, so it's totally different in the South. Well, probably mm-hmm. changing since I, was, since I was there, but, you know, coming out here to the Bay, it was just a, it's a straight shock on how much everything costs out here. You know, you hear about it as a kid. But then you actually get it, get out here and get in it, and it's like, whoa, it's totally different. So exactly, exactly. Yeah, so 
But if you can, how, how would you describe what you do to say a five year old? You know what I mean? Like your modeling career. Like how could you? How how would you describe what you do to a five year old? That is, just, I've never. <laughs> that's a good question. Um, basically. Like if, I, I don't know, like if a little kid were to come up to me and ask me, what do I do? I guess I'd tell them like, you know, I model clothes. Like I basically work for people who makes the hottest trends. I mean, the hottest, like the hottest clothes or whatever. And, you know, I wear them and walk for them and display the beautifulness to all the audience and the crowd. It's kind of hard because they, kids are, they're, they're comprehensive. <laughs> the five-year-old, they're not, they not going to fully understand, but exactly. I try to, you know, like... <laughs> Basically, I would just tell them that, you know, I wear the most cutest clothes and I have to go out there and represent. And yes, that's what that's what models do. They represent. Hey, I, that's a that's a great explanation. I have a five year old <laughs> and I try to explain to my five year old what I do when I leave the house late at night to go take photos. He's like, what are you doing? You're going to take photos again of some right. pretty models? And I was like, yeah, baby, that's what I'm doing. And in her mm-hmm. mind, I hope she understands what I'm doing. But she does. She sees me when I'm like editing the photos and stuff like that. And she was like, "Oh, I like that. Day. I like the, the I like the dress that she had on. I like her walks and stuff like that." Aww. So it, it might inspire her to do it one day. You never know. So right. you know, I just want to expose them because I did do a, um, a shoot with um, with your designer that you work with for the runway. I did a, a shoot for her for the magazine, and my daughters and them were there, so they actually got a chance to see me. So it's oh, always a good nice. thing for to be able to expose them to different things like that. So it's always fun when they're around but they don't right. really get, they don't really understand it just yet so exactly and just and just kind of roll it back to you one more time like what what do you say probably is your your best job you've ever had and also in the same term what's probably the worst job you probably have ever had as far as like nine to five or are you talking about what's yeah nine, yeah nine to five you say you had to get a nine to five grind on yeah i've been working since i was 19 so i've kind of had like with me i have a history of staying at my job for some years um, I would say the, the, fir- the worst one that the worst job I've had was probably my first one, which was McDonald's in Berkeley. Um, the manager that I had, you know, she was, she was a black woman and, you know, everything was cool, but you know, I, I was very experimental. Like I used to wear, come to work wearing red lipstick, pink lipstick, changing my hairstyle, stuff like that. She had the nerves to tell me that she think I look better in the red lipstick instead of the pink. And this is the manager for McDonald's. And I damn near lost my marble, so I had to go. <laughs> I had to go because I, I wanted to kill her. I said, you you can't be criticizing me like that. I'm the best uh, window one person you got. I'll be busting the trays, you know, making the little Happy Meal boxes. And she, yeah, she, 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 she threw me off with that. She threw me off. So I would say, yeah, just that overall, because me being in disbelief, that had to have been the worst job for me. Um, the best job that I've had... Other than modeling, I would definitely uh, have to say the airport, San Francisco airport. Um, airport. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. What part? What What are you doing? Do you work at one like one? Do you work at the like the counter of one of the airlines, or you work at some of the the food places, the, uh, the gate, or in the baggage? I am, I, I, so many jobs at the airport. Ramp agent. Oh yes, yeah, SFO. SFO. Yes. Oh so, yeah, it's probably a crazy. I'm considered a ramp there. agent. So ramp agents are basically. Uh, crew members that tend to the plane. So they basically would um, come up to the plane and um, put the water inside. And then uh, there would be someone else that uh, would drive the lavatory truck. So they'll pull up to the plane and, you know, dispose of it and stuff like that. Um, we have a, a truck called Sky Chef. So they come up and, you know, give the food to the flight attendants and stuff like that. So everybody has a job to do. And then at the same time, there, it, it's fast paced. So there's bags being loaded down, there's bags being loaded up. And then, um, also, there's a bag room. Um, rep agents are in charge of that as well. So when bags come down a conveyor belt, you know, you take them out, you take them off the conveyor belt and put them in the right cart. So sometimes, you know, people move too fast. There's something called misloads where you got the wrong bag on the wrong cart, which means it's going to go on the wrong flight. And that's been happening Uh-oh. a lot be- during the holiday. So uh, that job has taught me a lot. You know, I've, I've shed some tears there. Um, it's taught me patience and uh, to definitely be strong because there's some people there that they work. Everybody works differently. Everybody doesn't work like me. Um, I like to stay productive the entire time because I'm sure I'm ready to get out the door. You know, I like to work and just get out the way. But yeah, I, I definitely can say um, the airport has definitely taught me some lessons. Well, I definitely know who to tap into when I get this buddy pass. When I need this oh. buddy pass, I need to go somewhere quick, fast, right. and hurry. I know who to tap in with. 
<laughs> oh my god, it's good. It's all good. I got you. Yeah, man. So that that, that airport gig, it kind of it teaches you a lot about yourself and a lot about you know teamwork, and especially that kind of correlates with modeling. You have to work with a team. You got to work with. You got to have the attitude to always stay positive because I know things kind of go left on. The day of the tr- of of the fashion show because it's probably yeah. the piece might not fit right compared to where where it fit the last week it might not be him right or him be, that's the thing that is concerning something. like you might it's like you don't want to forget like your like the walk routine and nothing like that because you know it's showtime you know there's so many people out there and stuff and it's like don't forget don't forget and that's kind of like what I was kind of telling myself but I mean it was once I got on the stage it's like it just came back to me and it was like just go go and get it right and that's exactly what i did but yeah when you are nervous and stuff like that you have to keep in mind that you have to remember everything you practice because once you go out there and you forget you're looking crazy so you don't want to do that i know right would you ever do one of those like top modeling shows like a tower bank some is just like a new edition new edition of it like would you ever do something like that i definitely you had the opportunity? would now that i'm older and i know how to take criticism because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a tough girl i'm a tough cookie um i can take criticism so I definitely would, uh, always because I, I have been a fan and I've seen a lot of her episodes and stuff like that. So I, I would, I would definitely sign up. Yeah, do it. Like if you had a, if you were able to get a billboard with anything on it, what do you think you would have on it? Hmm. Well, it's gonna be a big ass picture of me cheesing for one. <laughs> Saying nigga, we made it. That's what <laughs> it's gonna say that for one. It's gonna have my little lashes on the side. We made it, yeah, Mama. We made much. it. Yes, that's right. Yeah, man, that's. I think that would be dope, man, to have. I've always like thought about, you know, even though people probably don't really pay attention to billboards no more, it's always been like a little small, little, you know, dream of mine. Let me get. I want a billboard just to have my work on it. Just oh, I do. I still pay attention to them. Me and that San Francisco traffic, I ain't got nothing but time. It ain't no right? billboards left and right, so I got plenty of time. <laughs> Hopefully, mine can make close- it over there as well in San Francisco. Hopefully, that could be one of the cities. Man, as soon as you go through downtown, it's just billboards galore just mm-hmm. coming through downtown. And That's then right. when you get close to the airport, they're everywhere. Exactly. Everywhere. Where do you see your career being in the next like three to five years? Do you see yourself like continuing to kind of excel in the modeling career or do you feel like you're going to be kind of scaling it back and doing more than nine to five type thing? Um, No. So I know one, th- yeah, three to five years, I ain't going to be doing no nine to five, nothing. My modeling is going to be my nine to five. That and um, I do sell lashes. I do have a small business on the site as well. So I want to progress with that. Um, in the next three to five years, I'll be selling more than lashes. I'll probably be doing like custom shoes, like adding little stuff to shoes, like rhinestones and stuff like that. And I, I have some ideas. It's just practice makes perfect. Just wait on it. Just wait on it. Yeah, it's all about patience and waiting your turn. And I, I totally get it. Like, we all kind of have a little side hustle that we're doing that we hopefully going to take off and replace our nine to five. Yes, and, because um, I'm tired. We're all in I'm that, tired. We're all, tired. Hey, hey, it's, <laughs> we're all in the, We're all in that same boat, man, trying to trying to figure out how we can get away from the nine to five, you know, and try to get in that, you know, have our entrepreneurs hustle on to kind of replace that nine to five and make that money. Because, mm-hmm. man, just like you, I'm just as much tired of it as you are. I know, cause this is it's it's all a lot of work, but they say hard work pays off, and I'm trying. I'm 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 doing right. I ain't out here sinning like everybody else, doing all that bad <laughs> stuff. I'm trying to do right. I'm trying, Jesus. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. But yeah, it, it's it's I gonna know. it's gonna work out for me, and that's gonna be the day. I'm I'm gonna be happy. I'm gonna be happier than what I am. So I'm looking forward. Yeah. So do you have any like uh, photo shoots lined up that you want to kind of, or ideas or some type of photo shoots that you want to kind of? get out there or you kind of just kind of waiting for the next fashion show kind of to pop up for you go to be a part of it's funny because me and one of my closest friends we were actually talking about that we were actually talking about how we do need to get a little bit more exposure which means more photo shoots you know and i do want to do that um i i like thinking outside of the box i also like standing out so i was thinking about doing a photo shoot in the woods Okay. Like in a woodsy area. I've done one of those before. Yes. I've done one uh, of those you don't before. see that's not like common. You know, you kind of see a lot of stuff like, you know, pictures with cars the and pop, just. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, little stuff like that, but the, you don't the, never the, really the see The normal stuff backdrop in the, in the studio and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, yeah, we totally, I, I totally get you. Like I've said, I've. I, I mostly shoot outside. I shoot outside because I like the different lighting from outside. I like the, the backgrounds, you know. You like to say like you want something to stand out because you can always kind of just go in the studio and pop the you know the backdrop up and kind of put a couple of props there and do that. But the thing about me like I love taking pictures just like you. I love taking pictures of nature like sunsets, the sunrises, like 
different plants and stuff like that. And I think that's kind of why I wanted to do the woods. Because I could be saucy out there in the woods. Just me and a tree. Me and a nature. You know. Hey, get it in. Yes. And, 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 <laughs> I, hate, I, don't, I don't know what's wrong with you. And how do you feel? Because, like, I've always had this, uh, this feeling, like, the free versus paid. So in your position, how do you feel about it? How do you feel about it? When someone reaches out, do you do you prefer to do the free shoes just to kind of get the get the work in? Mm-hmm. Or are you always like, look, I got to get paid. No. I got to get the bag no matter what. So I'm going to take, and I was, it's funny because I, I was just talking about this. Like, I'm going to take whatever I can get because it's all about exposure. And it's exposure for the fashion designer as well. Like, they, they need people to model their stuff and walk with them. And I need exposure too. So it's kind of like a trade for trade situation. I'm not turning down nothing, especially with me coming back and, Trying to get my face out there. I'm like I said, I'm not trying to do this nine to five no more. I'm trying to make this my nine to five. So I'm gonna take whatever I can get. So much. what are your next steps to kind of get there? What what are the things that you got in mind that you have um that you think you can do to kind of get your face out there doing the free shoes, doing the doing the fashion shows? What are some of those other things that you got in mind that kind of help you get to the next level? Um, so there's a different um company that I noticed as well. I believe it's called Mommy Mogul or I'm not sure on how to pronounce, but I've been looking at a lot of her stuff. And yeah, her shit's dope. Like just just the like the runway is a little different. It looks like it's um I don't know, it's just looks like a different type of environment. I think I wanna try to aim more for that type of field as well uh, as well. Like events from you know, still do trap art and stuff, but I wanna get my foot in the door with like other places, maybe even going like out of state. And stuff like that, but yeah, I, I'm trying to do runways as well. I know I probably need some a little bit of training, but I'm I'm trying to be on that hype. Yeah, you're trying to get the high level, you're trying to get to that next level. You always I have am. to kind of get your exposure. Got to get outside your bubble. Got to get outside your comfort zone. How do you feel about pushing your pushing outside your comfort zone? Do you kind of shy away from it, or are you that type of person like I have to get outside my comfort zone in order for to grow? Um, I will complain to myself because, you know, there's some stuff that, you know, I might not feel comfortable with, like if it comes to certain photo shoots, stuff like that, but I'm, I'm still going to knock it out because at the end of the day, it's, it's for my best benefit. Like I wouldn't be offered the, the gig if they didn't think I was perfect for it and I wouldn't take it if I didn't think I was perfect for it. So I think it's, yeah, basically it'll, it'll work out. It'll work out. You know, you got to have faith. That's one thing about, you know this industry and just the business in general, you got to have faith that it'll work out mm-hmm. and you, you have to be willing to do the things for free in order to get to where you want to be, you know, later on, because a lot of times people are like, Oh, I'm not getting paid for this. I'm not doing, I'm not doing. Yeah. It. And that and limits kinda... your, that limits your chances of, you know, exposure. And I'm not doing that. So now I understand. And I, and like I said, I was one of those people. I didn't, you know, I was, I was open to cap collaborations at first mm-hmm. and then I kind of started doing them. And then it just like, I felt like I was wasting a lot of time because people was taking advantage of my time. Oh yeah. You know, and yeah. People were taking just way too much advantage of my time. And then I just kind of like, was like, man, I, I don't want to do this anymore because I go and start get ready to shoot and I'll be there for two, three, four hours waiting on them to do the makeup. And then I was like, look, yeah, that's a lot. I can't do this. No- I just, like, I can't do this anymore. And so I kind of shut it down. And now I've kind of like opened myself up to it a little bit more of the idea to kind of do more collaborations. Right. Like I said, I want to kind of get out there a little bit too, because like you, I've been doing it for a while, but I'll do it heavy for a little while. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of tail it back. And then, you know, I kind of get back in. It's something inspired me. I kind of get back in. Where I yeah, but I don't want to do that anymore. I just want to stay. Yeah, that's I want to stay for good. I know what I'm <laughs> I haven't, yeah, exactly. I haven't just put both feet in. You know, at one point in time, I've never just had both feet in and just went all all in on it. I've been that's like, the same for me. in and out, in and out, in and out. You know what I mean? So, I totally, I, I totally get you when you said, you know, you want to kind of continue to, you know, grow and, and, and get your face out there. And I want to do that, too, as well. You know what I mean? But it's sometimes it's just like it's, it's difficult. Right. It's difficult. It so is. I, I get you. It's, diff, it's difficult. But you have to push through it. Can't complain. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You got to be be willing to, you know, work with people because you never know what opportunity that you that's going to bring the next opportunity that's going to bring you to the next level. Right. So, so what's something that you think is. That, that people misunderstand about you so something that you misunderstood about um i think you know people think that i'm all since i'm all small and quiet and stuff you know i've uh i've i've had my shares of you know like rudeness and stuff like that like i've again i've been like skinny all my life so that was a challenge for me, like growing up, like just accepting myself and, you know, my insecurities and my flaws and stuff like that. But I, I can definitely say once I came back to California, all that was out the window. I just, I don't know what happened. The self-confidence was there. I started getting all these tattoos and all this stuff. It Everything just changed. But 
tell me about you know some of the things that you you want to, you want to accomplish. What are some of those things that you wanted to accomplish? Like some of those goals that you have set for say for this year and next year that you want to accomplish. Um, I well this year I do want to accomplish more with the model and like get more into like a different like work for more different people like different companies um, other than trap art and then as well as like focus more on my lash business as well because I've had it for like. Yeah, I've, I've been in business for two years, and again, like, I kind of kicked back a little bit with the lashes and stuff like that, but I want to advance more in that, um, again, because that's, I'm, I'm good at, like, picking lashes, and, like, I'm good with the measurements and stuff like that, so that's another thing that's pretty cool to me, so I want to focus on that as well, and the modeling, and, yeah, so that's pretty much the goal, those two things for me. So, for a person who knows nothing about lashes, but I know a lot about lashes, so when I take photos of girls who have lashes, some have sometimes they have the big, they have the longer lashes mm-hmm. and they're like very long and they curl up a lot. And so it seems like their eyes are always closed. So I'm always like, <laughs> yeah, I'm no, always... those, yeah, those are the most popular. Those are, um, they're 25 uh, millimeters. Those, those, those bad boys. I preferably don't wear them. Although I do sell them, I wear my own lashes. Yes, because I sell different lengths. But those are a little bit too dramatic for me because I have more of a thinner face. So. You're not gonna be seeing you. You're not gonna see nothing but eyelashes. That's all you are gonna see. I'm look. I'm gonna look a little crazy, but those are they're they're cute. You know, I, I sell all lengths, but they're 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 cute. They're more for girls that are more comfortable wearing dramatic lashes and stuff like that. But for me, I, I look crazy. I look. Crazy. <laughs> so are you are you the t- person that put the lashes on, or you just kind of sell it to them and they kind of put it on themselves? Um. So I sell I sell them and they they apply them themselves. Oh, okay. And so how long does a pair of them, you know, this is me, I know, don't, don't look at me crazy. I don't know nothing about lashes. How long would a, a like a pack of, I would assume they come like a pack of two or like a four pack or something like that. How long do they last? How long, how long would a pack of lashes last a person? Um, so like it one time you should on... take them off and you throw them in the trash or you oh, no. with them? See, yeah, yeah, that's, 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 oh, that's so cold hearted. So it depends, <laughs> like it depends on the, the woman and how she takes care, like her maintenance with lashes. Normally it's best to like, take them off when you're done using them and like put them back in the case. So with one, one set of lashes, you could probably do like, hmm, maybe like two to three tries again, depending on the maintenance and how you keep them up. I, I'll say probably like two, three wears per, per, per lash. Mm, nice. What got you into this? Like you, because you you mentioned it earlier, like what got you into the lash selling? Well, well, I'm pretty sure you probably was using them first and kind of liked them and then exactly. them. so what made you, what, what inspired you to actually start like, hey, look, I can start selling, I can hustle these. Because yeah, that's exactly what it was. I, I've, um, I started wearing lashes, um, I think like in 10th grade or 11th grade, I don't know, but they were more full and dramatic and stuff like that. And I kind of eased my way down. But I don't know. I've always been to into makeup and stuff like that. I've always been to do my own makeup and stuff. But lashes, I don't know. Like it, the eyes are. I don't. I don't know. The when just wearing like full lashes is is it makes your eyes look more like dramatic, like more sexy. I don't know. It's something about it. And I'm like, I want to like sell my own lashes. I want to look for different styles and like just have a like a perfect look of of styles of lashes so that when girls wear my lashes, they can you know. I just feel like she heard. Like I, I, I'm very particular. I'm very picky, and for each style that I actually have, it takes me hours to pick on which one I want. I, I don't just pick random ones or nothing like that because a lot of lashes look the same. I like my shit to be different. I like my stuff to be different. So, yes, I'm very you know, particular. Coming from somebody who don't know what oh. the difference in them, I just kind of see yeah. them, and I just like, okay, you see them. Yes, yeah, so I don't what play. Do you... I don't play when it comes to the lashes. I love them. I I see. So where do you where do you actually sell them? Do you sell them on your website? Are you sell them at some type of booth when you set them up, or is it like hand to hand, word of so mouth type? So I deal? do sell them off of my Instagram. I will be um, making a website soon. I actually tried doing that, but you know something kind of happened. I got. These scammers, man, you know, the scammers out there. Yeah, so no. So after that, I said, yeah, it is going to take me a minute. But yeah, I've been doing it off of my Insta- off of my Instagram, my lash page. And I also do shipping. So I'll ship lashes out to different states, like if someone wants them, which I've, had, I've done before. And then I do deliveries. So I okay. would normally drop them off when I get off of work or like before work. Um, and then I'll do like a little, or I'll have them come to me. But I haven't been to any vendor events because, you know, I, I feel like I want to be really prepared and have my stuff together and then go. I'm not trying to go looking crazy and 
don't have the right labeling and all that stuff. Like professionalism is a lot, and you want people to buy your stuff and come back. So you know. I, hey, I totally understand, but you can't wait too long because sometimes perfection kind of holds you back. That's true. You know, sometimes you want to be perfect and you want to have it look perfect, but as long as the product is good, you can always, you know, improve it as it go. That's you right. Know what I mean, if you're doing you're doing a great job when you kind of like you're not letting the website thing slow you down, you're still, you know, hustling off your Instagram, your word of mouth, hand to hand. Mm -hmm. You know, keep doing that, and then you know, once the website is up, and then you can start shipping. You know, you might it might be a blessing that you you don't have the website yet because you might not be totally prepared to be able to ship worldwide. You might be get, you might get overloaded with all the orders. So this is kind of preparing. So when you do kind of hit that stride and you get the website, now you're ready to go for it through all of you know you exactly. got your inventory stacked up. You got your your labeling. You got everything. I still got a few go things I need to work on before I because I I want to do things right. Like I'm not trying to rush because when you rush certain stuff, it don't really work out like how you want it to. So it's just best to like just take your time. Again, yeah, it is best to not wait forever because the, I am a perfectionist and my OCD be kicking in. But I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna get it together, and this year is definitely the year, so I will be getting it together. So, what is a couple of pieces, a couple of um, tips to kind of help somebody to, you know, start maybe a lash business or something like that? Like, what are some of those things that kind of got you off the couch? It's like, hey, look, this is something I can do, and I want to really go after it. So for me, I actually started promoting the lashes before I even got them. Before I started buying them and all that, I was getting people. So I was doing like, um, like asking people to vote. Like, uh, would you buy lashes if I started selling them? And then I was asking them, you know what the name of my company should be and stuff like that. And I was having everybody click ABC and pick for me and stuff like that. But yeah, definitely. That's, that's basically what I did. I was just asking, getting people's opinion on, you know, if they would purchase for me. And then once I got enough feedback and stuff like that, that encouraged me to want to start selling lashes and get into that business because I don't want to, I mean, I want to sell stuff and, and do stuff that people are going to, you know, support and, you know, that's going to make money yeah. and get me out there. I don't want to, you know, have a product that is not really making money like that. So, yeah, it's not moving. You want to have products that's moving. It's kind of, you know, giving you confidence and, you know, that people, it gives people confidence when they use your products like that. Have you tried to like, you know, partner up with some, with some of the, or some of the designers to trying to get your lashes on some of the models for some of the runways and stuff like that? Not just yet, because, um, I do customize my, customize my own boxes and it is, I put the rhinestones literally one by one. So it does take a lot of time. I feel like once I get, you know, a few more boxes done and actually get the names of my lash styles, like on the boxes and stuff like that, like that's the last step for me. I need the names on the boxes and stuff. And then I think I'm going to be pretty much ready to go after that. You definitely got to shout the name of the company out. You got to shout it. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's called the V-Raw Collection. Um, V-Raw was a nickname I was given a few years back and I, I ran with it, so. Pretty much. Nice, nice. And what are some of the other things that you're thinking about? Maybe you want to add into the collection to go along with the with the eyelashes, like maybe some jewelry or something like that. Um, I don't know. I'm just asking. Customized Crocs. I think I want to do that. I've seen it before. I'm not gonna lie, but I haven't really seen it too much popular in the Bay Area. And I, I'm a fancy girl. I love like glittery and diamond stuff like that. So I know that whatever I like, because I get a lot of compliments on my shoes and stuff. So whatever I like. I'm going to put on the shoe that I know the customer is going to like as well. So I feel like that would be a good play for me and especially for my business because I did a, um, a voting on that as well. And there's a few girls that said that they would definitely purchase, you know, if I were to make Crocs and add the little, you know, Chanel pins and stuff like that. So that's another thing that I'm thinking about doing. But I don't want to give all my little secrets out because I don't want nobody trying to. Oh, no. definitely, definitely, <laughs> definitely, right. definitely. You gotta give some of the, you gotta get some of the juice out. Just kind of let the people exactly. know what you got coming, so they can look forward to. But I like the idea of what you do when you kind of say you, you you're crowdsourcing for information, seeing what the people like, asking questions. Oh yeah, I definitely have to because I'm not trying to be looking crazy out here now. But yeah, the people are definitely your best critics, and they 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 they're not gonna lead you wrong, especially the people that help support me. So, yes, pretty much. Yeah, definitely. And so, are you? When you when you when you're crowdsourcing information, are you getting it from your friends or are you getting it from strangers? Because I feel like the friends are always going to give you the positive information. They might yes, they, wanna, they don't want to they want to make you feel bad, so they're not, not going to always criticize you too hard. But the, it's always going to be a stranger to kind of give you your best criticism. So do you take it do you take it in stride when your friends give you good compliments, or do you kind of like look look to the the stranger to kind of really give you the real? Um, it's both, but preferably I would rather be critiqued by, you know, strangers or people that don't really know me as much or just know me on social media because yeah, they don't know you to enough to like 
know how you're going to react to certain stuff. They're going to give you the real. They're going to tell you what's real. And like you said, your friends are always just going, yeah, I'm a girl is cute and this, that, this, that. No, they don't know, they're probably lying. But yeah, it, it comes from the people that you, you don't know. It comes from people that, yeah, doesn't really know too much about you that are your best are your best critics and that are going to support you the most. I've learned yeah, that. Know that. Yeah, it's, it's always going to be people you that did, And those going to be the ones that are going to actually support you the hardest, believe it or not. That is true. You know? That is you true. Know, the, those strangers, they they really follow your stories. So when you're when you're on when you're on Instagram and you're promoting your stuff, uh, what kind of stories are you kind of putting out there for, about your company? Are you tell, talking about you know your upbringing, where did the, the drive come from? Like, it's, kind of talk about your story. Oh, uh, so wait, my stories as far like my Instagram posts or like what I'm saying? How you, when you're when you're relaying your information over to the people when you're doing your Instagram stories or your lives or just in general, how, what kind of story are you telling people that you want them to know about your brand? You're like, hey, I start this brand because I have a, a passion for lashes. I want you to look great. Like, I just kind of want to hear, hear your, get the people to hear your story. Um. So, yeah, that's how I basically started off. I would tell them a little bit about me, and then i tell them, you know, why I like the lashes and why I chose to start a lash business. Also, um, when I do display my lashes, I would... I go outside because that has the best lighting. I grab my little tweezers and I literally like do like a video of like the style of the lashes and then I'll take pictures so that they have footage and then they have like pictures of what the lash looks like. I do that a lot. I also post the customer reviews like of girls wearing the lashes and then I'll also post uh, like videos of the girls taking the lashes out of my hand and stuff like that. So little stuff like that girls like to see. It is it's so weird. It's hard to explain but Little stuff like that will make people want to like purchase from you, like seeing that you get customers like that. And just so that helps me like just posting a lot of my pictures of the customers and, and them wearing the products and stuff that helps my business. And that helps with the posting of me posting them on my, on my story. Basically, I post a lot of my customers wearing my lashes and that's, and that's what, what gets the people really in basically. That's what, that's what it's about, man. You got to show the customer success and, show the testimonials and people actually enjoying the product and they actually enjoying what they have and they're using it and they're talking about it and they get other people, you know, curious and want to purchase it as well. So that's, that's great. It's great for you. And then, you know, just to kind of roll it back and talk about your modeling career, like what are some of the tips that you would give somebody who's like ready to get into the modeling game, but not having really tested the waters yet. They're like, Hey, look, I think I want to do it. I'm not sure. So what are some of the tips would you give them? Um, you kind of push them over the edge. Like, Hey, this is, you can do it. So I would definitely tell them, yes, to be, well, I don't want to scare nobody off, but you, you do have to be prepared for criticism. Cause again, that's, that's important to me. Cause you know, I do feel highly of myself cause I know, I know I'm all that in the bag of chips, you know, but <laughs> it, it's, it's, yeah, you have to prepare for that. Um, I would definitely say be open-minded, um, and just definitely have fun because it's, it's, it's really fun, especially when you feel like it's a natural born talent of yours. It just rolls off naturally. Um, to be photogenic as well, to be open to free gigs and stuff like that for opportunities that are always going to be paid gigs and stuff. So just basically just take a lot that's being given to you because that is going to be helpful in the long run. It's not always about the money, although money is important, but it's not always about that. It's not always about it. It's about passion and doing what you enjoy. And I, I really love doing this shit. So I would definitely tell them that <laughs> so yeah to be open-minded and to um yeah to pretty much be to be open-minded to this fashion stuff because you know there are haters out there there's some critiquers out there you know trying to step on your toes and all that <laughs> stuff but to have fun because that's that's what really matters the most that's fantastic you know i don't even want to you know go any further because that's a that's an awesome way to kind of wrap up the pod. But before we get out of here, I want you to kind of give them your socials, give them your, your wherever they can find you at, anything you got coming up that you want them to kind of be on the lookout for. You know, this is time to plug it in. So go ahead, plug plug all that all stuff right. in for me. Well, my Instagram is going to be Belisa Marie underscore. And then also my lash business is the V Raw collection. Um, yeah, I bet those are basically my only two social media. So y'all, so make sure you guys follow me. Um, I will be doing more trap art events and hopefully I can advance on to other events as well. Um, pretty much. So yeah, follow me on the, on the gram and let's, let's make some magic. Let's get it happening. 
That's fantastic. I want to say I appreciate you, and I thank you for coming on to the Dope Vision Experience podcast. You've been such an amazing guest. You're telling us about the Japan. I've never really met anybody who's lived in Japan at any point in time in their life, and now I kind of know a little bit about Japan and some of, a lot about your background, your lash business. You're explaining to me how it works, so mm-hmm. I appreciate you. I appreciate and, uh, you for tolerating me and, and being patient because I was my heart was pounding out my chest and. I, I didn't ask me, can you cut some little parts out? <laughs> I <didn't> look <laughs> crazy, solid. but thank you, because this is it's my first. I've good. never been, I've never done this before. I've never been interviewed, so it's definitely an honor to be interviewed by you. You hey. definitely, I, I appreciate you because you do take the best pictures of a sister, and I'm gonna be blowing your art, where you your <laughs> photos. Uh, it, yeah, it will be all all around this room. So I do appreciate hey, I, you and your um your awesome work. I, I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. I take pride in what I do because I want you guys to be able to look back when you get old and be like, man, this is how I used to tell the kids. This is how mm-hmm. I used to look when I was young. Oh, so yeah. And hopefully when I hit 60, that's... I'm still like this. And they're going to be like, yeah, exactly. 30. Exactly. Show the, you're showing the kids like, look, this was mom and grandma. This was mama. This is what I used to look like. <laughs> exactly. I used to get it in exactly. back then. I was... You know, I mean, this ain't what you, this ain't what you, it ain't what I used to look like. It's what I used to look like on the wall right there. You see that? That's who I used to be. So, exactly. You know, I take pride. I try to, I try to, you know, make take those classic pictures of photos of people. And so I appreciate you being such a, a great model and, 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 and also coming onto the podcast because you didn't have to do it. So again, thank you. I appreciate you. And before we get out of here, I want to tell everybody, you know, it's always, you know, collaboration over competition. Remember to kind of bet on yourself, invest in yourself, and always be inspired. It's your boy Frank Nitty from The Sip. I'm out. Thank you. Yay.